Welcome to Honest Whispers Review for Sale. On this video, I'll be reviewing Gundam X Divider, Mobile Suit GX-9900-DV, Gundam X DV. For the series, Gundam X Divider, Mobile Suit GX-9900-DV, Gundam XDV. From the series, After War, Gundam X, this is a high grade, a 1-100 scale, and released by Bandai in 1996. This is a Gundam I personally built and fully detailed. And as you can see, a lot of intricate little lines. It did take me a lot of man hours to get this done. And I can get a bit OCD when it comes to Gundam. So I try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So if I get one side darker than the other, I usually end up erasing it and then re-detailing it. So I'm going to go over six different categories to review this. First category is design, which basically covers the look, the concept, the points of articulations. And with this Gundam and pretty much all Gundams, there are just too many points of articulations to count. But all I can say is that you could pretty much do any type of pose as you like. Like right here, I don't like how it's a little asymmetrical there. So let me fix that. I mean, even down to like a kneeling position because his knees are double jointed. You got a high joint and a low joint. So you could kind of bend this almost all the way through so that you can fold his legs. Uh, I mean, everything from the ankles, hips, uh, arms, shoulders, and of course, even the arms. Not only does it rotate, but you could pretty much, let me see here, you could pretty much move I don't want to do this and then make it fall. But yeah, you just got to take my word for it. You can pretty much do any pose you can think of. The only thing you might not be able to do is probably hold the gun with two hands. But beyond that, I mean, you really can't go wrong with any Gundam as long as you build, build it right. So, as you can see, I mean, this is something where, especially after the details, I mean, there's just so much to look at. I could just stare at this all day, <laughs> looking at whatever, you know, whether it be the legs or, or the face. Looking at it from the side, I mean... With the detailing, it really does tend to um, kind of stand out. I mean, it just really gives you that pop visually. And if you didn't do any details, it really tends to look a bit plain. This one does actually, well, the picture sample does actually have some details. But if you didn't do any details, I mean, all the legs and everything, it'll just look uh, completely white. So really won't, you really can't see all the little uh, definitions for the details. And with this, uh, I mean, there's all these armaments, like basically I could just read through like the divider X to, you know, the beam machine gun beam sword, which there's two, breast Vulcan cannons, which there's four, and then the X grenader, which there's two. And basically, mm, let me start with the divider X. This one, which I'll show you later, uh, has a lot of options you can do with. As you can see, well, you can't quite see, but you can see a seam line. This thing opens up. And then also, 
he's a um when you open it up it has a handle and basically you could hold it backwards which i'll show you in these examples so here it is and then that itself is a weapon you could also hang this on the back which i'll show you right here in the backpack you can see a little slot there so on the handle i have a little hole you could just stick it on there and then of course there's the beam gun and this one actually has a clip a magazine and the reason why i didn't put it in all the way was that in case i wanted to do some detailing I, I would take this off detail the pieces separately and then once i'm completely done then i would snap it together because if i snap it together it'll be hard to take it out i don't really have any fingernails and then if you're detailing it while this is together then you might get some uh ink that might bleed within the seam line so definitely wanted to avoid that but again it basically goes right here under the gun like a magazine Let's see, the two grenade, well, you know what, it's right here on the side. I mean, there's so many accessory that, accessories that come with it, and you just have so many, not just with posing, but so many options to hide, you know, which weapons you want it to be holding. So very cool. Uh, so if I wanted to take those out, It actually comes with the left hip armor, which is basically like that right there. But you would have to take the grenades out to put it on there. And as for the beam swords, it actually comes with the beam. And the cool part is, is that this beam sword is right here on the back. So kind of like a ninja katana, he, he could basically grab it. And believe it or not, you could have him posing with the arm, grabbing it and just holding it there. So these can be detached and then you basically put this on there and then have him have him basically holding or using the beam sword. So let's see, and that's pretty much it. There are other things you could probably do. Like the back, you could have this all spread out and then this thing folds out so here i'll give you an example so right here because once i start doing it uh, it takes a bit of time it is pretty delicate so once i start moving this piece uh, some of the other pieces might start moving so i don't want to take too much time on the video but yeah that's the thing about gundams yeah, there's just so many options so many things you can do with it and that's just with one gundam so if you get sick of him holding the the uh the shield if you get sick of him holding the shield you could just put it on the back and then maybe um arm him with the sword or maybe even arm him with just holding the grenade and yeah so therefore i mean design of course if you're getting like a master grade or a perfect grade or now even a real grade of course those classes would have more details more parts but even though still for a high grade um, you really can't go wrong with this and that's why as far as the design goes i give it a perfect 10 out of 10. 
And if you do decide to build a Gundam yourself, I mean, while you're building it, you're just going to be amazed by how brilliant and how innovative the engineering is for these model kits. Next category is sculpting. And as far as sculpting goes, uh, it just covers details, the execution, and the quality of the mold. And with Gundams, all Gundams are pretty consistent. Of course, they come basically, I guess you could call them like plastic sheets. I mean, they're not actually sheets, but basically they're like color coded or colorized plastic molds. So like it could be white, blue, whatever the color. You follow the instructions. So all the white pieces would come from this thing, from like one of these or this or something like that. And you just go by the number, letters, and basically just, you know, build part by part. And of course, when you just kind of snap them out, they will leave like little um, plastic, uh, I guess. Uh, well, let me try to explain this better. For instance, if I was snapping this out, see where it's attached to the frame. Well, it might leave a little piece of plastic right there. And for me, I just use a little, um, little scissor and I always shave everything off so that once you put them together, they would fit nicely and also it would be smooth. Like this would be an example right here on his forearm. And then of course, it may look a bit bumpy, but then I, with the, with the scissors, I basically smoothed it out. So if you actually touch it, it'll have, you know, you won't feel that bump. So basically, as far as the molding goes, um, the quality is always consistent and pretty high. It's just a matter of how much time you would put into it. And already I kind of went over a lot of the details. And even if you don't do detailing with the, with the uh, Gundam marker or whatever you decide to use you can see that the mode itself I mean it looks pretty much the same as it would either I mean the animation is more simplified but from this detailed picture and when you look at this the ratio uh, the proportions and even details what are for instance like one of the, you know, the chest right there, you got the, you got the cockpit, the ventilations, the, the four Vulcan guns. Well, basically when you look at it, the real thing, or at least the plastic model kit, it's pretty much exactly the same. That's why for sculpting, I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Next category is colors. Basically it covers the quality of the paint, if there is paint, but in this case, it is um, colored plastic. Uh, accuracy of the colors. And in cases like this, um, as far as the detailing goes, that's always up to you as well. The more time you put in, the better it may look. And I've seen some stores sell um like already made gundams like this yet i have to say again i put a lot of man hours into this and with ocd kicking in if if this part was darker then the left shoulder 
then I would pretty much erase it and do it over. If I make the lines, if I mess up and the line, um, I go over the border, I would erase it and do it over. So, I mean, I don't want to be biased, but as far as the amount of detail and the time I put in this, again, I try to be a perfectionist. So, but as you can see, I haven't done, I would say a good 80% of this has been detailed. So, and I don't want to be biased, honestly, because when you look at just the, the quality and the effort I put into this, I mean, I, I would honestly give myself a 10 without trying to sound biased. But as you can see, there are some areas that I didn't finish, whether it be the backpack or the gun. So I would say a good 80%. I only finished about 80%. So therefore, I'm going to give the color score, if I can get this back up there, as you, see, as you can see now his legs are overspread, I would give this a 9 out of 10. Because also it does come with some decals or stickers. And even with the stickers, I try to be as accurate as possible. And also with this, it comes with kind of um, like a metallic finished plastic as well on some of these. So definitely a huge plus compared to some Gundams where it's all matte finish. Next category is packaging and packaging like all Gundam, four color box, very cool, very cool packaging. Let me kind of put this instructions out of the way for you. And then not only that, always gives you some sample pictures, whether it be to show you uh, all the accessories, or the little options that it can do, like the, the, I guess like the backpack kind of folding up, everything that you can move. And also, you can see an example of the front and back. And depending on the series like this, you also see other Gundams that's in the same series. And as far as the design goes, it's very consistent with the other Gundams. So you have the same logo design, the pictures, the name, Bandai, like the format is always the same very consistent so therefore I give the packaging score a perfect 10 out of 10 so let me set this down and then I'm gonna go ahead and show you or actually let me repose this so he doesn't look all silly but then I'm going to go ahead and take this shield out just to kind of give you a better look of the Gundam itself as far as the feet and angle goes. Like I said, once you start moving apart, you're going to end up moving other areas or it's, you know, other parts are just going to kind of bend out. Cool thing about this is that uh, you get a trigger finger. That's mobile as well as the three other fingers that's why when i have the when i have them holding the gun i actually can put his 
trigger finger inside the trigger if I can there it is so that's just that's awesome because maybe like a GI Joe you could only have them like holding the gun handle but just because of the um, it's just an innovative design I mean really good engineering so that's why you're able to kind of have him actually holding with his pointer finger on the trigger. So very cool like that. I'll probably just give him a standard holding pose. Make a fist with this. Or as I said, you could probably have him grabbing this. I don't want to take the time to unfold his fingers and all that stuff. But something like that where he's about to ready you know where he's kind of ready to pull out one of his beam swords which i'll go ahead and pull one out it just kind of slides out here i believe get there it is And of course, I want to keep everything symmetrical. Now, one, one problem sometimes you might get is that the shield is quite heavy. So it's really hard to just keep his arm up all the time. And as I mentioned, this thing... You can see where the joints are, the movable joints, and that's kind of where it opens up. Uh, of course, you can't just open it. This thing has to open at the ends. And then when you open here, you could see that little hole where you could kind of put in the back right here as well. Of course, you would have to, I would have to slide these panels out. And this is just a shield. I mean, there's so many moving parts. I mean, it's, it's just amazing how much detail they put into this. So that's just an example on how it goes in. But as you can see, it has that metallic plastic look. So very, very cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and snap this back in into its place. Now go ahead and put that away. Because what I wanted to show you guys is the beam sword. And if I could oh, this one. See it's supposed to have that uh Supposed to have a hook. I'm trying to find which side is the hook. Oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> it kind of slid out so I couldn't see it. But yeah, once I put it in all the way, that's the hook I was talking about. So, simple snap. Let me get his leg standing. And of course, with any toy or any mobile, mo you know, model kit, the more you play or try to pose with, of course, the more it tends to get loosened. And that's why I try to, um, that's usually why I end up, once I make it, I end up just wrapping it up and storing it. So since I don't even really get to enjoy it, might as well sell it to someone who who would like it or enjoy it more so once i close the fist voila of course the sword is so much lighter than the shield so with this i could pretty much do any angle and very cool let me spread out the x a bit more 
so he looks kind of his silhouette looks a bit more awesome maybe even kind of a step forward here with one one foot more in the back to make him a bit more battle ready looking and of course even here you can just kind of adjust to make everything kind of fit better and then I don't want him to look off well you know what it's too late it's gonna he's gonna look off like these joints are pretty stiff of course last thing I want is to make him look like what 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 would that be like some kind of ostrich legs so I do like it more straight and then let me go ahead and do that yeah as you try to pose different ways gravity is kind of your enemy here like i said it's very intricate takes a bit of time to get that pose you want but of course once you do it's very cool not even centered here okay so there it is didn't want to take too much time doing that but I did want to show some of the options that you can do just just by switching the weapons itself I mean it just you just get a dynamically a much different looking Gundam There it is again. So yeah, just by uh, trying to pose and stuff, I mean, as you know, it's uh, it's a good um, time killer, I guess. I hate to say it, waste your time because I believe it or not, when you're just messing around with this, it is quite fun. So next category is value, which basically covers um, the original price versus aftermarket price. You know, I didn't really look up how much this would be for an unmade one. Uh, it is quite old, but sometimes they end up, I guess, re, uh, you know, they'll make a new one. Maybe the box might have a different design. So a lot of times they might even re-release it. So Gundams don't tend to have a good aftermarket value. But still, as far as original price versus quality goes, you're definitely getting your money's worth for sure. Now, in cases like this, I mean, it really depends on you know, who makes it, how much detail they put into it. And for me, I mean, when I list this for sale, I'll probably start off because I've seen Gundam stores sell it for, sell like these kind of high grades for, you know, up to like a hundred dollars easily, maybe like a master grade or perfect grade for like 150. I mean, it really depends on the Gundam, the quality, some, some Gundams are more popular than the others. Like for instance, from this series, I know the close-up is going to be all blurry. Here we go. Let me zoom that in. Uh, I would say some of these Gundams might not have as much value only because the demand isn't there as much. But then when it comes to something like this, like the Gundam Divider, uh, definitely would have potential to have higher value. So, I mean, it's really unpredictable as value goes. But as I said, most likely, if you're buying it like an unmade one, uh, yeah, you could probably still find this for a good... 30 35 dollars you know maybe 40 depending on how limited the production is and whether if they reproduce them or not 
so that always makes a difference a good example would be like gundam wing where they pretty much reproduced over and over kind of i mean once they sell out they'll do another production run and since they have the the mold they just have to you know just put it in production so again aftermarket really value it you know varies depending on who made it and how much detail you put but as far as an unmade one they usually don't go up too much in value therefore the value score i'm just going to give it a slight above average 7 out of 10 Final category is overall, which basically accumulates the five prior categories, design, sculpting, colors, packaging, and value. And overall, it does kind of depend if we're talking about something that's, uh, you know, already made like this. It really, it really depends on how much man hours you're putting in and how much, um, I guess, how much love you put into it because like i said like here would be an example if i can show you real quick where the lines like i try to keep the consistency of the thickness of the lines now sometimes you might end up darker sometimes you might end up thinner so for me the, like the feet are a good example of where I would make sure everything's all nice and clean within the borders. Sometimes when you're inking this or detailing, once you do a line, when you pull it out, you might leave a little little dot or a little um, line that goes kind of off. Very annoying. And for me, it's like I have to erase it and do it over. And that's why something like this uh, easily takes me over like 40 hours. And I'm just guessing or just estimating. Sometimes more, sometimes less. I remember doing a Gundam Double X. Way more lines than this. It was a headache. But I did end up getting it done. And looked really nice when once it's finished. Shield like this. Like... See how the metallic parts, you really don't need to do any detailing. It kind of has that look already. But then, of course, when I have to do the detail on this, I want to make sure all the lines are within the border. Here would be an example. I guess I did find one. Should probably give myself a ding and give the color score 8 out of 10 rather than 9 out of 10 but I would probably do this over or maybe um, kind of retouch the line because I don't like how this is really dark or this is really light so this would be an example of me I wouldn't say messing up but just being a bit inconsistent but of course when you're looking from afar you really can't tell and that's just me being honest and kind of, I don't want to say picky, but again, being a bit OCD when it comes to doing these details. And that's why, and just the way this Gundam looks, it's just really awesome. Especially when you get the face and the little head plate done. That's just, and look how the eyes which is decal but has a nice shine to it or sometimes it's translucent plastic you know what it might actually be translucent no actually i think it's stickers because this the cockpit that's translucent so anyway don't want to take too much time it's already at over 30 minutes but i did want to show you uh all the details i can show and therefore, I give the overall score a 9 out of 10. So, to recap. Design, 10. 
out of 10. Sculpting, 10 out of 10. Colors, after seeing that shield, 8 out of 10. Packaging, 10 out of 10. Value, 7 out of 10. And overall, 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Continue reading the King James Version Bible and eat your vitamin C's daily.